Hey everybody, Fabio here once again. Uh, I'm back tonight, continuing once again with my series of Power Ranger reviews. And tonight I'm going to be reviewing um, one of the best seasons and my second favorite season personally, Power Rangers in Space. Um, I know I put a bulletin up, I think early last week, saying that I was going to try to get this review up last week. But I also did say that because of work and uh, other stuff. Like I went to Otakon last week. Uh, down in Baltimore, which is like the Baltimore anime, 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 yeah, anime convention, um, that I, I wasn't sure if it was going to get up or not, but, um, I watched through last night the remaining episodes that I needed to see, um, in order to do this review, the ones that I haven't seen in a long time, so, um, you know, I watched through those, so now I'm back tonight, you know, doing this review, and plus I had kind of a rough day, so, you know, I want to kind of, you know, just blow off some steam and get this video up. And like I said, Power Rangers in Space is one of the best seasons of all time. And it's my second favorite season next to Mighty Morphin as a whole. Not just season 1, 2, 3, Mighty Morphin, but, you know, the whole series. Um, and this was really a hit or miss season because uh, Turbo um, was a lackluster season in terms of the ratings and the fan reactions at the time. So, you know, In Space was actually originally supposed to be the final season of Power Rangers. So they really had put, they pulled out all the stops, you know, in this season and, and did the best absolute job they could to save the show. And you'll find that out as I talk about, you know, some of the storylines and some of the episodes in the course of this review. But anyway, you know, in terms of like the storyline, um, you know, Power Rangers in Space takes place right at the end, or takes, picks up where Turbo left off, excuse me. Um, and that, in that, that aspect, uh, TJ, Carlos, uh, Ashley, and Cassie, um, at the end of Turbo, got into the space shuttle and were launched into space to go and save Zordon, who was captured. Now, they meet up, or they get sucked into this, uh, space shuttle, the spaceship, the Astro ship, which become, yeah, yeah, the Astro Mega ship, that's what they call it. And they act, end up meeting a Red Ranger, who is revealed to be Andrews, played by uh, Chris, uh, Christopher Kamen Lee. And at first, Andros doesn't believe that they're Rangers and stuff like that. But then, you know, Alpha gets to him because Alpha goes along with the Rangers, you know, and he believes Alpha. So then he trusts the four, you know, Turbo Rangers and they become Power Rangers in space. And TJ becomes the Blue Ranger and Carlos becomes the Black Ranger and Cassie and Ashley remain... Uh, pink and yellow respectively anyway and andros he's kind of a solo guy he's like a loner he's actually trying to in not only find where zordon is but he's also trying to find out where his sister is because we find out that his sister was uh, kidnapped when they were kids and he hasn't seen her since and in addition to trying to find zordon he's trying to look for his sister and meanwhile because zordon has been captured all of the villains in the galaxy have come together to celebrate. And one particular villain um, rises up, and her name is Astronomer, played by Melanie Perkins. And she is, you know, she becomes like the new head villain. You know, Dark Spectre, who is the, uh, you know, the monarch of evil, who is the controller of all the evil forces in the galaxy, names her the leader. So, with that being said, now... You know, she's trying to prevent the Rangers from trying to find Zordon, you know, in addition to sending monsters and stuff like that onto Earth, you know, to just dis to distract their attention. And over the course of the series, we uh, we actually re-encounter the Phantom Ranger and Justin and Adam to kind of tie up loose ends and to, you know, pay homage to, you know, the previous seasons. And like I said, this was supposed to be the last season, so I guess, you know, they wanted to kind of just tie up some loose ends, like I just said, and you know, bring back some old characters. And then also we, we learn of Zane, who is the sixth ranger, who is all, he's the silver ranger, played by Justin Nemo. And we find out that he was Andro, Andros' partner on KO-35, where Andros is originally from, and he was severely injured in an attack and was uh, placed in a uh, cryogenic chamber where, you know, he was frozen, you know, until he revived consciousness. And the Rangers crash land on this planet after the ship is damaged and uh, Zane is, un is thawed out and he joins the team. Then after that, uh, we find out a little more about 
who Astronema really is, and we, we come to find out that she is actually Andros' long-lost sister, Corone. So Andros tries to make, you know, a bid to get her to, you know, come back to the good side. And she actually does, but then she's actually recaptured by the forces of evil, and she gets bionic implants put in her, which wipes out her memory, and she's evil once again. So there's that. And then for the first time in a Power Rangers series, we actually have a, su a successful attempt at an evil ranger team. Uh, Astronema unleashes the evil Psycho Rangers to take on the Power Rangers, and over the course of a few episodes, they end up fighting them and their uh, monster incarnations, finally defeating them. And then at the end of the season, we actually have the final battle, like I said, because this was supposed to be the last season. So Dark Spectre tells all the evil forces to unleash all of their evil powers and their monsters and stuff like that to take over the universe. So the Power Rangers are left to defend Earth, and what happens is, you know, they end up, uh, Dark Spectre is destroyed, and Astronema becomes the queen supreme leader of evil. So now the Rangers have to, you know, once again revert Astron or Astronema back to Koron and get her to become good again. But then they also have to, you know, find a way to stop evil and purify the universe, which they do do. And I'll talk about all that, you know, in the Countdown to Destruction when I recap the episodes and stuff like that. But anyway, that's the plot of Power Rangers in Space. Like I said, it was supposed to be the last season, so they really pulled out all the stops. And they delivered some really good storylines, and I'll talk about all that, you know, in the couple of minutes here. But, you know, this is really the first serious kind of season. Uh, there is comic relief and stuff like that, which was previous in the past seasons. But this is a straightforward, in-your-face, you know, kind of dramatic season. Now, Mighty Morphin Season 3 had some pretty dramatic episodes. But this is really the first season where it's, it's prominent throughout the whole season. And it's also the first season where we have, like, a relationship explored between a good a hero and a villain. Um, so that's really cool. And, you know, there's some really cool stuff in here. But originally... Before the, well, before the second half of Turbo was in production, I found online um, some, uh, like a, a document containing, um, you know, some, the, some of the early concepts for Power Rangers in space. And originally the storyline was going to have the Phantom Ranger at the end of Turbo uh, spy on this secret meeting between the villains. And then he has to get that message back to the Power Rangers when he's discovered. And then they also find out Zordon's kidnapped. And then the Power Rangers, the Turbo Rangers, head into space to meet uh, Demetria. And then to continue their fight in space. And it was actually supposed to feature Justin. And everybody's colors were going to stay the same except Carlos. He would have been the Black Ranger. And TJ would have stayed red. But I guess because... The fans reacted negatively to Justin that they changed it, you know, to the way that it is now. So, you know, that's that's what the original kind of concept was going to be. And personally, I like that idea. I think it would have been pretty cool to have like the same, you know, group of team or, you know, the same, you know, to have the Turbo Rangers come back for another season. You know, I thought that would have been pretty cool. But In Space is really cool, and, you know, as I said. But anyway, um, in terms of like the new cast members... Like I said, we get Andros, who's played by Christopher Kamen Lee, and he's kind of a lone wolf. You know, he's a guy who's just trying to find out what happened to his sister. And, you know, he is a Power Ranger, but, you know, he is more focused on, you know, finding what happened, you know, to her and also to save Zordon. You know, and Chris Lee, I heard in real life, he was kind of like that on the set. He was kind of a loner, but that's what they were trying to get out of the character and stuff like that. So that's cool. And Andros is a great Red Ranger. He's right up there with Jason as one of the best Red Rangers, in my opinion. I really like Andros, and I really like the stuff they do with him in the, se in the season. Then, like I said, we get Zane the Silver Ranger, played by Justin Nemo, who looks like Brad Pitt. <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, and Zane's really cool. I really like the Silver Ranger. You know, I remember when the Silver Ranger came out, you know, the first episodes... It was some really cool stuff. You know, I really liked that character. I liked the costume and, you know, and the Mega Winger, his Zord. You know, that was really cool, too. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and then we also have Astronema, who was played by Melody Perkins, slash Corone, you know, Corone. 
and she is Andrew's sister, like I said. It's not a big deal, because everybody who's seen the season knows, you know what I mean? So, no spoiler alerts here. <laughs> but anyway, um, so, you know, she's a good villain, and she's also a good uh, hero. So, you know, that's really cool, you know, that she can do both pretty well. So, I like that, you know, because she plays the part of evil perfectly, and she plays a pretty good hero, so. And... I'll, well, I'll talk about that later in the Lost Galaxy review. So, anyway. Um, you know, and another, another thing that people complained about in Turbo was the voice of Alpha. So, in this season, they changed his voice. And he's voiced by, I think, Wendy Lee, who did the voice of Scorpina on Mighty Morphin and various monsters and stuff like that. And she also did the voice of Faye Valentine in Cowboy Bebop, for those of you that didn't know that. Anyway. And, and uh, another creature or character that I like is um, Darkonda and Darkonda is really cool because he's like the ultimate he's like one of the ultimate villains of the show the guy's just so evil because uh, he's the one who's responsible for the kidnapping of Corone, which I'll talk about in the episode review um, Flashes of Darkonda and um, like I was saying you know, he's just pure evil, you know, he's just so wicked and stuff like that, there's not really any, like, anything else to the character except he's a bad guy and he doesn't care, you know what I mean, so that's cool. Um, another character that I like is Ecliptor, and I really like his, his suit design, is really cool, and, um, you know, I really like that, he's, he's kind of like a tragic character as, like, as the series progresses, if when, you know, a little bit. But he's just really cool. He's a really cool villain. Yeah, I really enjoyed him. So, you know, that's awesome. Um, Elgar comes back. So that was cool because I liked Elgar in Power Rangers Turbo. You know, he's the comic relief in the season. Um, along with Bulk and Skull, who team up with Professor Pronominus, played by Jack Banning. And Professor Pronominus is like this, you know, he's a goofball. You know, he thinks aliens are real and stuff like that. So throughout the season, they're trying to... You know, they're trying to help the Rangers out and stuff like that. So, some really cool stuff with Balkan Skull. And this is, like, with Turbo, like, they're kind of featured less and less in this season, which is kind of, you know, upsetting. But, because, you know, I grew up, as I've said before, with the original and Balkan Skull always having something to do. Um, so, you know, so it is kind of sad to see him kind of slowly fading away in this season. But... I guess Saban felt that they over, you know, they overstayed their welcome. I don't know. Fuck Saban. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but the Zords are cool because there's, uh, like I said, the Astro Mega Ship, which transformed into the Astro Mega Zord. That's a cool Zord. I like that one. The Delta Mega Zord's really cool because the hands, it's like a, a Gatlin gun, like it's got fingers like that, and then it goes to like a gun, and it's pretty cool. And then it, it forms with the Astro Mega Zord to be the Astro Delta Mega Zord. Which was cool. I like that combination. And then the Rangers find the uh, the Mega Voyager, Mega the Mega Voyager, yeah, Mega Voyager, Mega Zord. <laughs> yeah, right. The Mega Voyager, which is cool. I like that Zord. It's like these five different vehicles that combined into one. You know, I like that one. And then Zane's Zord, the Mega Winger, which was cool because it it's got that's a really cool Zord. And also in this season, we get some pretty cool American Zord footage, which I'll talk about in those specific episodes so i'll talk about all that in a minute here so well i'll start talking about it now <laughs> um the first two episodes from out of nowhere where the turbo rangers travel into space and they find the astro mega ship and they meet andros and you know they have a battle you know and they you know earn andros's trust and respect you know and become the space rangers it was a cool episode like the first part because we have, like, this gathering of all the evil villains, like, uh, Zed and Rita are there, and Divatox is there, and originally Divatox was supposed to be the continuing villain in this season, in the original concept, but they changed it. Um, and then Master Vile makes an appearance, and we see some of the old monsters and stuff like that, and Astronom is there, and then Dark Spectre comes out, and he talks, and then we have Andros in disguise, and then he takes his hood off, and he's revealed to be a Red Ranger. So that was cool, because that was, like, the first time that we had had, you know, like, that many villains in one room, and then have a ranger just infiltrate the room and stuff like that. So that was pretty cool. I, I really like that moment. Uh, next up is Shell Shock, in which the Space Rangers team up with the Ninja Turtles, 
because at this time Saban still had the live action Ninja Turtle show on. It was it was at when when they did this episode, the show was just getting ready to end, unfortunately. But I'll talk about all that when I do my Ninja Turtle reviews, hopefully soon, because I am working on getting you know Ninja Turtle stuff on DVD. So anyway, that's another review for another day. But Astronoma kidnaps the Ninja Turtles and turns them evil, and they help the Rangers, and then they betray the Rangers, and then they end up saving the Rangers. So it's cool, you know. It was cool to see that. I really liked that episode, you know. So that was cool. Uh, next up is Never Stop Searching, which is the introduction of where um, Andros, um, damn it, where Andros um, begins his search for his sister. We find out that. His sister was kidnapped, and we find out, you know, that he's been searching for her and stuff like that. And it's also the introduction to Darkonda, I'm pretty sure. Um, I forget already. I'm sorry, but Dar I think Darkonda makes his first appearance. And another aspect I really like about that character is he has a rivalry with uh, Ecliptor, which is cool because they get some pretty cool fight scenes in some of the episodes, and they actually fuse and become a Dark Clipter in a couple episodes. So that was pretty cool to see that kind of thing. Because we hadn't really seen that before with villains on the series. So that was interesting. Uh, next up, a Ranger Among Thieves. Which was cool because Andros uh, falls in with these uh, group of car thieves. Unknowingly. So he has to, you know, kind of, you know, snap their bad habits. And, you know, also fight a monster. So that was like the first, that was like a Red Ranger episode. So that was cool. Along with... Never stop searching. So that was cool too. Uh, a wasp with a heart, where uh, this monster is trying to become good, but he's having difficulty with that, and Cassie tries to help him out. So that was a cool episode. I, I like those kind of episodes. You know, it kind of shows you that just because you know you look a certain way, or you know you are a certain way, doesn't mean you can't change that. And, you know, become good and stuff like that. So that's a cool episode. And I think it sends a good message to kids, too. So, that's just me. Um, the Delta Discovery, which features the return of the Phantom Ranger. And, you know, he finds out where Zordon is. And he tries to, you know, send the Rangers to get them. And he gives uh, Andrew some data cards, which um, gives him access to the Delta Megazord. So they use that to fight a couple of monsters. And this is, you know, I was really happy to see the Phantom Ranger come back because I really like the Phantom Ranger. And he, he then, he reappears in Countdown to Destruction. And I'll talk about all that when I talk about Countdown to Destruction because there's a lot of information on that uh, particular episode I would like to share with you guys for those of you that don't know. Um, then we have the Beryllion Sting where Darkonda unleashes this monster which stings Carlos and then he becomes a monster. So TJ... And Andros have to go find a cure. And this was cool. I remember, um, well, I'm just going to say it. Uh, In Space is actually, like, probably the season that I watch the most because of the continuing storyline. Because I, I just wanted to see what would happen every day. So this is, this is the season that I just kept watching every day to see what would happen. So I remember watching a lot of these episodes when they first came on. So that's cool. You know, I just, I forgot to mention that in the beginning, but, you know, so, but that's okay. Um... Next up is TJ's Identity Crisis, where TJ is injured in battle, and he loses his memory, but then he regains it, you know, in time to help his friends. A cool episode, you know, there's not, I think this is like the only TJ episode, and TJ, Selwyn Ward, a really good ranger, a great red ranger in my opinion, forget what all you haters say, <laughs> I'm just messing with you guys, but you know, I really like TJ, so it was cool to see him have another episode to himself. Uh, next up is a two-parter. The first part is Flashes of Darkonda, where um, we find out that Darkonda is the one responsible for kidnapping Caron. So Andros uh, sneaks to this planet, which is in inhabited by monsters and all the villains and stuff. And it's cool because we got to see a lot of the old monster costumes. Um, and he wins a set of key cards, which... Uh, he doesn't know what's on them, but he knows they're from Zordon, so that, you know, he finds out they're from Zordon. So then Darkonda finds out that he's a Red Ranger, so they have a, a fight scene in this, the, it's called the Onyx Tavern. I forget what the name of the planet is, but it's cool to see Andros just go solo against all these villains. It was really cool. And it leads into the second part, the Ranger's Mega Voyage, 
where they find out that the key cards unlock the Mega Voyager and the Rangers gain a new Zord to fight against, you know, Darkonda and, you know, Astronomer's evil forces. So that was cool. Uh, next up, True Blue to the Rescue, where uh, Justin returns. We find out that uh, Lightning Cruiser and Storm Blaster have been or captured by Divatox. And they're, you know, uh, Storm Blaster escapes and gets Justin. And the Rangers are actually kidnapped. Um, and Justin, you know, morphs into the Blue Turbo Ranger one final time uh, to save his friend. So that was cool. Another nice little team up episode. You know, to see them, you know, see Justin again. That was cool. I like that. And next up is the Silver Ranger Saga that I call. It's the introduction of Zane with Survival of the Silver, where we find out his backstory. And, you know, he is thawed out and joins the team and helps them out. Uh, Red with Envy, where uh, Andros thinks that Zane's trying to steal Ashley away from him. And we also find out about uh, Zane's demorphing powers or ability. Or, you know, his demorphing, which leads into the Silver Secret, where we find out Zane can only be morphed for uh, two minutes at a time. So at the end of the episode, he, you know, he goes to a lightning storm and gets struck by lightning, which re-energizes him, and he can morph for as long as he wants. Uh, Date with Danger, where him and Astronomer kind of fall in love with each other for a little bit, and they try to go on a date, but, you know, Zane is called away by his ranger duties. And then Zane's Destiny, where... Uh, the other rangers are captured on KO-35 doing some research and Zane and Andrews have to clear up the situation and they find out Darkonda set him up so they also fight Darkonda and then Zane decides he was to stay on KO-35 and I call this the Silver Ranger Saga because it's pretty much the only like Silver Ranger episodes like the Zane episodes of the season because after this he's just kind of delegated to a smaller role which sucks because I really like Zane and the Silver Ranger and stuff like that so but he's got, you know, these five episodes, which are pretty cool, you know, so he gets some cool stuff in there. But anyway, uh, next up is, well, backing up a minute here, from Survival of the Silver to the end of the season, in my opinion, it's just some great episodes. Because you have, like I said, the, Z the Zane saga, then you have the Astronomer saga where she turns good, then turns evil again, then the Psycho Ranger saga, and you got the uh the one where andrus finds the little cute alien which i'll talk about and then you have where he finds out his battleizer powers and the psycho rangers make a comeback and then you have uh the episode where the mega uh where ah find the where ecliptor gets on the mega ship and then you have the, where they get trapped on the desert planet and then you have countdown to destruction so like these last like 23 episodes are just non-stop action they're just great episodes and i highly recommend any power rangers fan if you, if you don't like the rest of the season just watch these because they're great you know they're just awesome but anyway speaking of the astronomer saga well first off uh, always a chance which is one of my favorite episodes because johnny young bosch comes back as adam which was great you know he helps carlos out and he morphs as the black ranger again so that's definitely one of my favorite episodes now the astronomer saga secret of the locket where uh, Andrus finds out Astronema is his sister, um, you know, after he knocks her locket off, you know, he opens it and finds out, and then, which leads into Astronema thinks twice, where, you know, she is kind of contemplating, you know, leaving her Astronema role and going back as Caron for her brother's sake and stuff like that. Then we have the Ranger's Leap of Faith, where they accept, accept, accept accept uh astronoma or accept Corone, you know as who she is and stuff like that and then she helps the rangers out and then dark specter's revenge where he sends an asteroid towards earth and we get some pretty cool american zord footage and this is also the introduction of the mega winger zane's zord and they stop the asteroid but unfortunately astronoma is captured uh once again and she's given a bionic implant and reverted to evil. So, you know, that kind of sucks. But anyway. And then they also help Balkan Skull because there's like an alien attack going on. And they get in this experimental spaceship. And they think they get sent to another planet. But not really. 
because they, they're like in the desert. <laughs> so the Power Rangers come and help them out. That's that's probably the highlight Bulk and Skull moment of the series, unfortunately. So, but you know, because they find out where Zordon is in in uh, I think the Rangers Leap of Fate, and but they find out it's a trap. But Astronomer doesn't know, and she actually helps out the Rangers and stuff like that. So that was pretty cool. Next up is the Psycho Ranger Saga. Uh, Rangers Gone Psycho, where the Psycho Rangers are unleashed and the Rangers are easily overwhelmed. Then we have um, Carlos on Call, which I don't know why they put this episode in the Psycho Saga, because it kind of slows it down. But Carlos, his identity is revealed to this little girl, Sylvie, who uh, exploits that, you know, because she uses him and stuff like that. And then he finds out that her brother has passed away and stuff like that, so it is kind of a sad episode, but it just kind of, like, puts a roadblock in the Psycho Saga, because you have Rangers gone Psycho, and then you have this, and the Psycho Rangers aren't in it. I think they should have just switched it, have this one first, and then just the whole Psycho Saga, because, like, on the, the Power Rangers in Space video that came out, it's the Psycho Saga, and it doesn't have this episode, so, you know, kind of slows it down a little bit, but anyway. Uh, next up, a rift in the Rangers where Cassie and Ashley are, you know, just kind of reach a breaking point because of all that's going on, you know, with Astronomo and, you know, Zane and the Psychos and stuff like that. So, um, you know, they kind of just bicker and fight and, you know, they end up destroying Psycho Yellow. So that was cool. Then Five of a Kind where uh, TJ comes up with this idea where if the Rangers fight as the same color, it will confuse the Psychos. So that was cool. And then we also get an appearance. Uh, Zane becomes Psycho Silver. And then he ends up helping the team out. So that was pretty cool. And then the, the blue Psycho Rangers destroyed. Uh, Silence is Golden. Where uh, the rain, the Psycho Rangers. Uh, red, yellow, and black. Uh, get like voice samples of the Rangers. And they memorize it. So now they know their voices. So the Rangers have to be quiet. And Cassie's at the mall. So they're like stalking Cassie. And then they end up, uh, like, having to go... Uh, the Rangers go to Earth, and then they find Cassie, and they stop the Psychos. But um, they actually capture the Mega Winger Zord. So, and then the final episode in the Psycho Saga, uh, The Enemy Within, where the Rangers find out where the Mega Winger... Or the Mega Voyager is, excuse me, and they have to fight Psycho Red, Black, and Yellow in their monster form, and they actually use all the Megazord to stop them. So that was cool. It was cool to see all the Megazords together and stuff like that. A really cool episode. Next up, another personal favorite of mine, Andros and the Stowaway, where Andros uh, saves this cute little alien, and he the alien gets on the mega ship and stuff like that, and then he grows. And it was just cool, like another like Andros episode. And like I said, it is a personal favorite of mine. I really like this episode. It was cool. So, I liked it a lot. Then, uh, Mission to Secret... Another two-parter. Uh, first, Mission to Secret City, where um, Astronema has built like this other city, and she's uh, kidnapping humans and sending them there. And then we also find out the uh, the number... Because Andrews has like a battleizer. Number one's a power punch. Number two is like a power strike. And then number three is his Battleizer armor. So he unlocks his Battleizer armor in this episode. And he saves the Rangers because they're uh, captured. And then they uh, destroy the satellite which frees the people from the city. But then it leads into the second part. Ghosts in the Machine where the Psycho Rangers come back as ghosts. And uh, Astronema has like this uh, demolecularizer machine. Which turns people into key cards. So the Psychos use it to come back. And then the Rangers uh, have to fight the Psychos once again. So that was cool. Uh, next up, the Impenetrable Web. Where the Mega Ship uh, is like trapped in this web. And uh, Alpha has to take on uh, Ecliptor alone. And then Ecliptor finds out where the Mega Voyager is. And he actually uh, powers up like this red form. And he actually destroys Mega Winger. I'm sorry, the Mega Voyager. And he destroys the Mega Voyager. Next up is a line in the sand where uh, the rangers are trapped on this uh, like desert planet by this uh, Hummer monster, Tankenstein. I think it's Tankenstein, something like that. So then Zane has to save them. 
And then um, we have the finale, Countdown to Destruction, where, like I said, all the evil forces in the galaxy, you know, unleash, you know, start their war. So we get to see the Gold Ranger again, the Alien Rangers, uh, Blue Centurion, and the Phantom Ranger, and the Space Rangers are on Earth. So, the, you know, you know, like I said, Dark, uh, Dark Spectre is destroyed by Darkonda, and um, so Astronema becomes the supreme leader of evil. So what happens is, you know, she says that the Rangers must give up or she will destroy Earth. So the Ranger, or Andros goes to the Dark Fortress, which is Astronema's headquarters, to save Zordon and his sister. So the remaining Rangers are on Earth, and the citizens actually band together and, you know, stand up and fight with the Rangers. And the, the Rangers reveal their identities to the humans, much to the surprise of Balkan Skull. So, um, excuse me. So it was, so they, you know, the humans actually fight with the Rangers, which was really cool. It was a really epic moment and stuff like that. That was awesome. And then, um, Andros makes the ultimate sacrifice and destroys Zordon, but Zordon's energy wave uh, purifies all evil. So, Red and, yeah, Red. Zed and Rita and Divatox are turned good. Um, you know, all the other evil beings are destroyed. And peace is brought to the universe. And Corone is reverted back to Corone. And the Rangers save the galaxy and, you know, the end. Now, originally, Countdown to Destruction was supposed to be a three-parter. But because, I guess, of the budget and, you know, time constraints, they cut it to two parts. And throughout the course of this episode, we were actually supposed to... Uh, there was supposed to be a scene where uh, Cassie meets up with the Phantom Ranger and he reveals his identity to her. Um, you know, we were supposed to see that. Um, I think that's pretty... And there were supposed to be a lot more differences. I That's not all I've heard of that episode. You know, but... You know, it would have been cool to see who the Phantom Ranger really was. In my mind, it's Billy. And one of the writers, I think it was Judd Lynn, said that if he had stayed on the show, it would have been Billy. So that would have been pretty cool. But, you know, these, are, these two episodes are kind of sad because, you know, Zordon is destroyed. And like I said, it was originally supposed to be the end of Power Rangers because... You know, I thought at the end of this season, I was like, well, what could they possibly do next? Because all the forces of evil are destroyed, and Zordon's gone. So what are you going to do, you know? But we found that out in Lost Galaxy, which I'll talk about in that review. But anyway, um, in wrapping this up, Power Rangers in Space, like I said, is a fantastic season. has some of the best episodes and storylines in any Power Rangers season. Uh, a personal favorite of mine, it's second next to uh, Mighty Morphin, because I remember watching the entire season when it was on. This is And this is where I stopped watching it religiously, because after they destroyed Zordon, it's like, what could they possibly do? But anyway, so, you know... Awesome, awesome, awesome season. Check it out if you haven't seen it. You know, I highly recommend it for those of you that haven't. And for those of you that have, go back and watch it again because you'll enjoy it once again. So, you know. But uh, thanks for watching. And sorry about the, the delay in the making of the next video. But like I said, I had work and I had Oticon and, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, but I got it up tonight, you know, blow some steam off and had a rough day so anyway once again thanks for watching i hope you liked it uh and take care i'll see you guys on the next one peace